they've strained their Yamaha engine and it's significant that it's a Yamaha engined outfit leading and second and third. I say significant because up to this race, Mick Barton has been using a Suzuki engine. He decided to return to a Yamaha and it certainly seems to be paying dividends. Colossal crowd at Silverstone today. Ideal racing conditions. You can see from the shadows of the machines on the track that the sun is really shining, the tarmac is hot, the tyres are even hotter, they're getting maximum grip, and my goodness, they need it. Stryer, Biland. Rolf Biland is a man who is always out to find a loophole in the regulations. He did it originally by... He was the man who thought of and produced with Louis Christian these long outfits, Dilan pioneered them. That was a year when there were two classes in the World Championship and with two different machines, Biland won both of them. And it's Stryer leading, Biland second. Third is still Barton, fourth is still Svartzel, fifth back there still are Steve Abbott and Sean Smith, the men from Riddings, ex-British champions. So in the first three places, because Schwarzel is up into third place now, number three, Werner Schwarzel, has put it across Mick Barton. I'm wondering now, because Mick Barton is dropping back, you see. That's the man who was leading just very recently. He's dropping back, and it looks to me as though he's strained the engine. He's having to give best to the three Continentals in front of him. That's nothing to be ashamed of. And as Valtisberg gets his weight right over to the right, just with his toes tucked under the bar that keeps them in position, and if they slipped out, he would pitchfork out, out, over the side of the outfit at some 120 miles there. Thank heavens he didn't. Now, down. Schwarzel's coming up. Schwarzel looks as though he's going to try and make a challenge for second, and Biland is trying to go through on the inside of Woodcote and take Stroyer, who has nothing of it. Watch the front wheel when they come round the corners and you will see it literally shimmering in spite of the width of the rubber. And that's half distance. Ten laps completed in this 20-lap race. Stroyer, Bilan, Schwarzel, Barton, Abbott, and then Alain Michel and Jean-Marc Fresque, the French pairing in sixth position. And that gives them, if they finish there, five points in the championship to add to the 47 they've already got. 52, they're in third position, but we've seen virtually nothing of them. There's the man. Well, it's a long, long time since Holland had a world champion in any class. And hello, who's that out of the running? It, it looks like Graham Gleason's outfit. Yes, it is. It's Graham Gleason and Kurt Rotenbuehler, the Swiss. Graham Gleason comes from New Zealand. They're out of the race. And now, number 32, Pascal Fevre is going to get a shock soon. He's going to be engulfed by one, two, three outfits. He looks over his right shoulder just as well because there's Stroyer, there's Biland, there behind Biland is Schwarzel. And he's been lapped. Very depressing, of course, when you think you're going like stink and uh, all of a sudden three riders come past you as though you're standing still and you realise that you are now nearly three miles behind them in half distance. Let's just enjoy this. Biland, Schwarzel in third position and Stroyer sandwiched between them. Now they're down to Beckett's third gear. 11,500 RPM. They change up as they exit Beckett's towards Chapel, fourth gear, fifth gear. Down the hangar straight, up into top and sixth gear, that is, building up the revs to 140 miles an hour as they come into Stowe. Shut off, go down a gear, and Stroyer goes through. 
Now it's up to fifth again. Back to fourth for club. The right-hander. Number seven there is Frank Rathel and Phil Spedlove. They come from Preston. They've got a Yamaha outfit. They too are going to be lapped. As the leaders go in fourth gear round club, now they're up to a part of the course which is almost as quick as the hangar straight as Raffle and Spendlove are going to be passed now, first of all by the lead, and coming up to there is Stroyer. Raffle's been lapped, Stroyer on the inside. Deland holds the outside line, keeps the lead. And as they come up to the midfield men now at rather over half distance, 12 out of 20 laps, it's conceivable that there might be some unintentional balking and so close is the battle for first, second and third places that it could completely change things. It does. Stroyer seizes opportunity, nips through the gap, laps the tail ender into the lead. Schwarzel has closed right up on Rolf Biland. So it's a Dutchman leading, a Swiss in second place, a West German in third position. Barton has largely disappeared from the picture now and the, the British Grand Prix of 1984 here at Silverstone on this glorious day is between these three men and I wonder if Schwarzel is going to tire. As I said earlier on, he doesn't like Silverstone. Not that he's showing any sign of it at the moment. It's still as they heel over to the right and the rider, of course, can hardly move. He's got both knees on fiberglass troughs with his legs stretched out behind him, his right foot operating the gear shift pedal, his left foot operate, operating the brake. That's Derek Blackbourne and Mike Mark Day from Leicester, number 41, in their Yamaha powered outfit. They nearly all got these Japanese two-stroke four-cylinder engines. And watch the lapping now. As Blackbourne gets passed, first of all, by the leader. Who is Egbert Stroyer, then by Biland, then by Schwarzel. And look at the rider's eyes when you, when we, we get close in on them and you'll see that they're focusing way ahead because you've got to look right through the corner you're approaching to get the line right for the next one. And sure enough, Blackbourne's now been lapped by the first two. There's Schwarzel, he's going to go past him. He, like Biland, Schwarzel, as he comes out and laps Blackbourne, is sponsored by Mike Krauser. And rider and passenger, of course, have to work in complete unison. If the passenger's timing is wrong, if his foot slips and the weight is in the wrong place, it completely destroys the balance of the outfit, the concentration of the rider. It has been known in sidecar racing at the start for the sidecar passenger who pushes not to get aboard in time and for the driver to rush off without him and he often doesn't discover until the first corner when he goes off the course. That didn't happen here, thank heavens. So another lap completed. Stroyer leads, Bilan second, and now what was a five outfit race looks like finishing as a two outfit race between the two top men of sidecar racing of 1984. The world championship leader, number two, Egbert Stroyer with Bernie Schneiders and, and someone off, it looks to me as though someone's off at, at Stowe. The man, they, yeah, it's Marcus Egloff and uh, his brother, Urs Egloff, who've gone off. And it looks to me, thank heavens, as though they're perfectly all right. Now they've got to get the outfit out of the way because the leaders are approaching, coming down hangar. You see the yellow flags waving in the background. That means look out for danger. And here are the leaders. It's Stroyer leading. A round of applause from the crowd in the background, which you probably hear at uh, the marshals very quickly writing that outfit and, and getting it off the course. And there are the first three the first two absolutely together and then about half a dozen lengths behind them, a bit more now, Werner Schwarzel. 
Well, what about the tactics? Is Rolf Bilan playing a waiting game? Is he watching where Stroyer breaks? Watching where Stroyer changes gear? Watching Valtisberg changing position? Because uh, they're a very experienced pair. And it could well be that Biland and Valtisberg are just playing a tactical game now, watching Stroyer and Schneiders choosing their moment, probably on the last lap to go through, conceivably even on breaking at the last corner of all, Woodcote, to win. Well, there's, there's possibly the answer, because they're through into the lead. Again goes Rolf Biland, but he's run wide, and Stroyer immediately retakes the lead. Now they are absolutely on 10 tenths, these two, no doubt about it at all. Because Biland challenged there, he challenged and succeeded, he went through, he took the lead, only to run wide because he was going too quick. His outfit understeered wide, and through on the inside went the man who's leading again, Egbert Stroyer, on his way at the moment to winning his third British Grand Prix in three years. And after today, there is only one World Championship event left in the sidecar class this year. It's uh, the Swedish Grand Prix. And if Stroyer wins, he would go into that uh, with 67 points. Under the bridge, Bilan takes Stroyer again. That could be a rehearsal. That could be a rehearsal. I wouldn't be at all surprised now to see Bilan lose the lead again to Stroyer and even be content to do so because he's now decided, obviously, that he can get through at Woodcote. But by the same token, Stroyer will be expecting the new race leader, Rolf Bilan, to do just that on the last corner and will be ready to slam the door in his face. Well, just imagine this. Over 120 horsepower from each of those four-cylinder, two-stroke engines. And now Bilan is definitely edging away. Bilan. Stryer. And it's definitely between these two. I think, I think Werner Schwarzel has decided to settle for third place and ten points. After all, he's second in the in the uh, championship at the present moment. Is Werner Schwarzel the championship leader at the moment? Of course, Stroyer. Schwarzel is in second place. Michel, who's down in sixth place in the race, is third in the championship. And Rolf Villan, number one there, who is leading, is fourth in the championship and steaming up hard as they come up to number 10. Now, they're the Zerbrug brothers from Switzerland, and they're a potential mobile chicane in the way of Villan and Stroyer. Are they going to move over and let them through as they come to Cops? Yes. Thanks, lads. Oh, Valtisberg looking like a tailor's dummy slung over the back of uh, Bilan's machine. Springs into life, puts his weight over to the left. Now he'll get over to the right, watch him get up and move across. See Valtisberg do the same thing. Concentration, of course, has to be absolute. If you relax for one split second at this speed on a racing line, at minimum, you lose speed. At the worst, you go off. And at these speeds, that doesn't bear thinking about. Bilan leads, Stroyer second. Coming up to the closing stages of the race, Werner Schwarzel is dropping back in fourth position. Coming up now... Alain Michel is coming up through the field. He's improving his position. And Derek Jones and Brian Ayres, the British pair, as we watch the leaders are doing well. They are up to sixth position and gaining. The Japanese rider, Matsuo Komano, is up to seventh place behind Jones and Ayres. But the leaders go under the bridge into Woodcote.
and of course it's tremendously physical obviously especially for the sidecar passenger but the rider too has to move his weight across as much as he can he's constantly operating with his feet the brake and the gear pedals controlling the engine revs with the twist grip on the right hand handlebar the braking of the front wheel with his right hand the clutch lever with his left hand so it's all action inside there and we are now on lap 18 in this 20 on lap 19 in this 20 lap race we should see as they complete it Stryer leading having won in 83 and 82 Biland having a look round the side of Stroyer's outfit. It's not exactly a grudge match between these two because in fact they got on well together but it's tremendously important to both of them and Biland goes through for about half a machine's length of the track. Then Stroyer fights back, it's side by side on lap 19 now. There should be a board going out at the end of this lap to indicate that they are starting their 20th and last lap. They're coming now up from Abbey towards the bridge into Woodcote. Stroyer leads, Bilan second. Past the chicane, which you don't take in the sidecar racing. Out goes the board. They're on their last lap now. Stroyer leads Bilan and for academic interest, Schwarzel is second, Michel is third. Jones, Derek Jones, the British rider with Brian as his passenger, is in fifth position. And Kumano, the Japanese rider with his Swiss passenger, is in sixth place. But who's going to win? Now, was Rolf Bilan playing possum all the time? Has he got anything in reserve? Down hanger. The fast hanger straight, 140 miles an hour for the 20th and last time, and Biland is closing as they come down to the right-hander at Stowe. Whack it down into fourth gear. Out of Stowe, down towards club. It's the Dutchman, the Dutch pairing of Stroyer and Schneiders. Schneiders almost invisible. Out he goes to the right. Out goes Voltisberg for Biland to the right. And as they come up to the 130 mile an hour Abbey corner, this race is probably going to be, is going to be decided at the very last corner. They're coming up to Woodcote now, the last corner on the last lap with in front of them Hein van Drie, the Dutch rider who's far enough ahead not to balk them. It looks as though it's going to be Stroyer's race. Biland is right up with them across the line and it's Stroyer wins. Biland second. An absolutely superb race, and for the third year in succession, Stroyer has won, and Bilan looks as though he's going to lose that world championship. Schwarzel in third position, Alain Michel in fourth place, Derek Jones in fifth position, and Matsuo Kumano, the Japanese rider, in sixth position. So, 15 very well-earned points. For Egbert Stroyer, he's now won in Austria, he's won in West Germany. He goes through now with one round to go in Sweden with 67 points, leading Werner Schwarzel in the World Championship, who has 60 points. Alain Michel, third in the World Championship, with 55 points. And Schneiders gives Valtisberg the thumbs up. And you can see that uh, there's a lot of friendship between these two. And we won't be seeing a sidecar race like that again for a long time, I'm sure. A superb victory then for Egbert Stroyer and Kurt Valtisberg. There you see confirmation of the final positions and what exciting stuff that uh, really is. Stroyer and Schneiders win it from last year's world champions, Bieland and Valtisberg. And since that race, the Swedish Grand Prix has taken place. And Stroyer and Schneiders finished fourth, but it was enough to clinch the World Championship for them, as you see there, with 75 points. Bieland and Voltersberg, as I say, last year's champions, uh, could only finish fourth this time. And the best-placed British pairing, Derek Jones and Brian Ayres, in fifth.